Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I got a big one and I have a pen live liner. It's the 8000 series on the Fierce 3, which is a relatively new reel. And uh, this one was sent in because it's got an over tightened drag. And I thought at a moment, uh, since it's a relatively new reel, we'll just do a quick uh, take apart here to show you how this reel is made and comes together. And then I'll go on to repair the uh, the drag issue if I can. I understand the reel has already been apart, so there may be something that's out of sequence here, but that's okay. So let's start with the uh, the exterior of the reel. We have a nice slotted spool. It's the Fierce 3. I think it's been on the market about a year now since they, they upgraded off the uh, Fierce 2. This one handles a big, big line. It handles uh, 310 yards of 25-pound test, so it's telling you this is for a uh, significantly uh, large reel. I, could, I think one of the problems I'm going to have here is you can see this spool is bouncing up and down a little bit. I think that's probably just because it's loose. That's all right. We'll deal with that another time. Uh, it also handles about um, some significant braid uh, lines in the heavier sizes as well. So the reel has got a... Um, a metal frame to it. It's a relatively heavy reel. It's a very big reel. When you get into the bait casting reels, you need both the top drag system and the lower end system, and that causes you to uh, to bulk up the reel on both sides because you have two drags. When you're in uh, bait feeding mode, it releases the top spool so that the spool can let out the line. And then as you go to crank, it'll set that back, and then you're dependent on the top drag for that um, reel to work. Well, speaking about folks that you're dependent upon, I want to thank our first responders and essential personnel, and that includes everybody in the uniform services, fire, police, rescue, EMT, first aid. Uh, and I also want to thank the folks that are essential workers, uh, including the medical, everybody in the medical field, and uh, the transportation workers, and... Uh, teachers, everybody who's doing their fair share to keep us safe. I see that the uh, pandemic's ramping up again, so uh, we're not through this thing yet, and I thank everybody who works day in and day out to keep us safe and, and healthy. Well, we're going to take this apart. We're going to take a look at what's inside so you have an idea if you're thinking about purchasing one of these, and uh, we'll show you what's going on here. So we have a, uh, a spool that's a traditional setup. I believe it's the six drags. Let's go take a look right now. I believe these have also been changed over to the, the HT100 drags. The earlier Pen Fierce line had felt drags in it, and I think the difference on that uh, series, yeah, these are the uh, these are the HT100s. You can see one nested below. It's a six drag system. On the six drags, you have two round washers. Oh, you have all round washers. They've, they've gone where, on this drag system, the stop that holds the spool is actually the little studs on the washers themselves. So um, you just alternate the metal washer with the fabric washers or the HT100s. That's a Carbitex hybrid washer, and uh, that, that's a serious upgrade over the Fierce 2 line. Again, they had the felt washers. Nothing wrong with the felt washers, but a reel this size, dealing with heavy fish, you're, you're li liable, you won't necessarily will happen, but you're liable to rip those up, uh, the felt washers, if you're not properly maintaining them. All right, so that's the spool set up, and it's nice. Let's take the handle off next, and we'll just take a look inside. We'll do a little bit more on the mechanics of the reel, and then I'll kind of go around to uh, trying to get this thing set up properly, whatever's going on with it. I do know that this is way over tightened here. It may just be a way that it got reinstalled, or it may be something more significant. So in order to work on the bait feeder reel, you've got to separate the case. In order to separate the case, you need to do what I just did there. Remove that, um, or loosen it at least, the attach. And we can come over and take the one out of the side here. And you can, you can probably get this side plate off without removing this end at this point. And actually, I'm, I think I'll do that. I'll leave it on just to show you how it works when we get underneath here. So bait feeder reels became popular about a dozen years or so, uh, I think, about that. 
uh, it's kind of the best of both worlds. They call it live liner because typically what you would do is you would you would hook on a bait fish that's live, you'd let it swim, and the swim would release the, the line on your spool rather than you continually letting out line and bringing it back in uh, at the right depth. So uh, that's why it's called the live liner. And uh, they became popular uh, when the technologies kind of moved to uh, support it. And uh, what it's done is it's, it's given you two reels in one, right? It's uh, kind of like that juicy fruit gum. It's a top drag, it's a bottom drag, you know, the kind of expressions there. Well, I'm loosening these up. These are Phillips head screws with a through slot. And I just find, for whatever reason, that the flat driver does a better job of breaking the initial seal. And then the Phillips head screwdriver does a better job of just taking them out of the case. I've often been asked about mechanical screwdrivers. Can you use them? And I would tell you, if you have weak hand strength, you can use them. But I said that with a little bit of undertone in my voice there. And that's because I've seen an awful lot of these screws get stripped out in the case from, because of the torque of those um, drivers. And once you strip them out, you're, you're in kind of a tough place. Because if you strip that screw out, you probably have to drill it out and re-tap it. And if you do that, well, all bets are off. But, uh, and I'm not a machinist. I don't do that. So if somebody tells me they're sending me a real or a stripped case, they be forewarned. We should be able to lift that out even though we have this here now. I don't think this comes down and this has been over tightened. That will be a, could be a problem. But this case should separate. There we go. So this is the way that the bait feeder mechanism is set up. I left this in here because it had spring. I didn't want that spring to shoot. have a spring set up that's going to trip I thought I had that I do when you load this spring down I'm gonna hold the spring when you load that arm down you'll notice that it pushes down here that's going to release the set you see it here it's, it should release the set on the uh, bait feeder mode lock it in with this stud below and enable that back end to work. When you flip it up, this drag comes out of play. This set of studs on the main gear trips from that piece here. And when they trip, then you go into top feeder mode. Well, I'm not quite sure what what's happened here. So I'm going to be taking this apart. But in the interim, what I want to do is just... Um, give you one little bit more of the overview. We have a three burring system, I believe, probably four, they're counting the instant anti-reverse. You have a burring on this side, a burring in the back, a burring up top here on the rotor, and you have a uh, anti-reverse burring, so that would be the four burrings. If they did a fifth burring, and I, I didn't pay attention there, the fifth burring would either be in the handle or it would be in the spool. Well, we're going to take this apart just to show you up top here, and just because I'm going to be servicing this reel anyway, so what the heck. I was told that uh, initially when this reel was serviced that the crosswind block was thought to be a culprit. Now, I don't, I don't know that. You can see that there's fresh grease and the like in here. I don't know if that's an issue with that or not, but to get to the crosswind block, we're going to remove the, the hold down screw. That's the one I'm working on right now. It's a Phillips head screwdriver. And all the pieces and parts I take off go into a parts tray. That's so I know where to find them when uh, I go to reassemble the reel. All right, that comes off. That's a little double clip, double C clip that rides in the grooves. Now we can remove the axle shaft. That came out nice and easy, so there isn't a problem with the axle shaft. Next out is the main gear. That's the second of the ball bearings here. Nice, solid, machined uh, main gear. Very nice. Take the crosswind block off. 
And I'm not seeing any damage or anything extraordinary here. So I'm not quite sure. They said that it's not running the way that it was before um, they worked on it. And uh, that could be any of a number of things. But I think the culprit here, again, is going to be in the, the bottom line drag system. And we'll just uh, go slow, try and inspect, and try and figure out what it is that's going on there. One more thing I'm going to do while I'm doing this, I'm going to remove the hole down for the motor. There's a little tie down clip here. I'm trying to do this without my hand getting in the way of the video. And then there's a nut here that we can generally get this way. And if you can't, and it's time to move over to your ratchet set, find your deep ratchet. I always keep these at, on hand because it's just easier for me as these tools are needed. I'll try this one. And I think this is going to come off in a traditional counterclockwise manner it does and I just use that ratchet to break the piece and we unscrew the top section we should be able to walk the, rat, uh, the rotor off at this point and then you can see underneath on this so this has a backup anti-reverse system there's a, a plastic claw when you're reeling it's pulling it in and when you go to reverse it pops out this one's not popping out maybe that's one of the causes of the issue here it pops out and that pop out is a double claw you'll see all the ridges inside the spool and when this pops out that's what's going on there but I don't I'm not quite sure why that wasn't working mechanically before Well, it should be working. All right, there we, there we go. We're starting to see a little bit of that. Okay, I'm going to check the, the orientation on that one before I reinstall that. But sometimes these things go below, and sometimes these things go above. In this case, I think it's set up properly, and that will pull it in and push it out, as you can see it moving here. All right. So we'll take that out. This is your spring set up underneath on the eccentric drive. I'll keep those together. All I have left here to take out is the three screws for the pinion gear and bearing. And then what I'll do is I will uh, go down and, and figure out how to get that downside rear drive off. I lay the screws out on the table as I do this because I don't know if they're all the same size. I'm assuming they're all the same size, but assuming makes problems later on. So verify it while you have the chance. And if there is one that's uh, in the wrong spot, well, just note what that spot is. Also, when you take these things off, sometimes you'll find, as this is the case, you'll see I have two rounded sections and one flat section. Note that the flat, flat section, get a reference point, it's to the left of your um, real arm. That's the way you want to reinstall it. And I'm thinking maybe that's what caused the issue here, because it would make all the sense in the world that the flat side goes here, not to interfere with the throw of that uh, anti-reverse. I'm going to bet that's what I got hung up on before. And again, this reel's been apart, so it wouldn't surprise me if that's your orientation there. Okay, let's get these off to the side. And there's a lot of those screws that look the same, so I kind of keep them together in different corners of this parts tray. So what I did was I, I put the the tie down or cap next to it. We should be able to just pull this out now. That's your gear assembly. These are beautiful gears inside the reel. 
So you have a bearing here, and it's in a cup. And notice that there's two different sides of this cup. There's an indented side and a flat side. The indented side's going down because this collar on the anti-reverse gear is proud. It's not flush with that anti-reverse gear, so you need the indentation on the uh, bearing side. Make sure that that's there. Second up, then, when you take that anti-reverse off, you're going to notice that one side has got a metallic or bent-over metal finish, and the other side's got a plastic finish. Take a picture at that point, because that's the downside. And if you put it on upside down, you're not going to have uh, the real turn at all. All right, there's your extra bearing, right? We have two bearings on the, uh, on the pinion gear. So it's a five bearing setup. There's one on each side of the main gear, two up top, one in this carrier here, and the anti-reverse. So it's four plus one if you're keeping score on that. Okay, so that's an inside view. It's a nicely made reel. It's got uh, top quality uh, components. It's got an issue here. I'm going to find out what that issue is, and uh, we'll just be able to move forward from there. But right now, this thing is over tightened, and I got to take the next steps here. I got to figure out how to get that loosed, and I'm not quite sure how to do that at the moment um, without marring anything. So I'm going to just let it go for a moment. I'm going to stop the overview there. We'll put all this reel back together again. If I can find out what's causing this issue, I'll kind of continue the conversation. Okay, so I took the time to lift out the rear drag and to parse it out so that I have all of the pieces according to the uh, frame. So let's go through that. We have a washer first, then we have our carrier. Uh, carrier is described as uh, the ratchet. Then we have a uh, eared washer. We have the first of the drag washers. We have the click mechanism that's going to click on side inside the uh, piece there. We have the keyed washer. And we have the second drag washer. We have the uh, pronged washer. Let's see what they call the pronged washer. 69 is the, uh, is calling it an eared washer. And we have the spring. And then inside there we have the adjuster cap which rolls in and out and I suspect maybe that's what's well, that hasn't been over tightened that works so if you if you thread that out that will come out so it looks like all the pieces and parts are here so I'm not sure if that was just a misinstall or if one of these was out of sequence it's hard to tell I probably should have been paying some more attention so let's do this then we're going to take the washer and put that on top of the ratchet and interesting to note if you're playing along we have a sealed washer here and we have this little stick that's a click so make sure that that's mounted properly inside and uh, we'll just see quickly what that one's called it's a, a click pin and retaining ring so don't lose that if you have that in your uh, in, in this stack here all right, so just following the schematic now, and this is where it's so oh so important to do that, we have the eared washer. Those are the ones with the little prongs. Load them up. With the four sides. That'll sit in there nicely. You'll see how that sits. Next up then is a drag washer. This can be, um, lubricated it doesn't have to be lubricated okay so that's the next one then you have your click mechanism here and the click mechanism mounts so that the flat side presses against that drag washer so it goes in like this and then as you put it in I've seen this mistake made way too many times don't just push down and either have this spring shoot or uh, worst case uh, bend it just Pull it in with your, your fingernail, and then you can press down once you've got it in one of these little slots. That's the way it should properly load, so don't, uh, don't get aggressive with it. Next up then is the flat uh, or keyed washer. Make sure that you push down on all of these. 
then we have our second drag washer and then the spring assembly is going to nest inside of this pronged washer and those prongs are going to face down. So you can do that one of two ways. You can either insert the spring into the, um, the carrier, that's the way I prefer to do it, and load in with those clips going down into the two open slots. So that's how it's properly set there. Now remember that little click pin there. Don't lose that as you go to reinstall them. So this should press up for the first part you hear it and then we're going to load this in to the assembly now that little uh, click ratchet uh, or spring washer or whatever they're calling this thing that's on there it's going to seat itself on uh, top of the, uh, the carrier so that's the way it loads in there and then what you want to do is you want to take those two screws that were the hold down screws for this and uh, start your reassembly. But you can test right now, and certainly we're not locked up at the moment, uh, so that's all good. I don't know what was causing that over tightening there, but whatever it is, this is working the way it should at the moment. Okay, let's wrap this up then. What did we do? We took the reel completely apart. We showed you how it's made. We showed you the HT100 drag system up top. Didn't discuss this, but it's a braid ready spool. It has that little rubber band in there that's going to keep it from slipping. Nice aerodynamics, change of paint color on the deal, change of the drag system. Now it's gone to the HT100. Four ball bearings, one on each side of the main gear, two up top on the pinion shaft and an anti-reverse bearing, which is four plus one. We took this apart. We found out that we were pretty jammed in the, uh, the rear drag. We showed you the components of it. We set that to the specs of the, uh, the uh, reel, as shown in the schematic diagram. And we noticed as we were taking this apart that the collar for the bearing probably was installed incorrectly or interfering with the, the backup or secondary dog system. That may have been contributing as well as this to the performance of the reel. So all done now. Very nice smooth operation of the reel. Nothing like uh, what was found earlier. We have a uh, functional bait feeder. When you're in bait feeder mode it releases, <coughs> trips back so that it tightens and locks in so that you go to top drag on the end. So that's it. That's your Pen Fierce 3 8000 Live Liner Fishing Reel, a rear drag and a top drag uh, addition for floating uh, live baits and chunks and the like. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. It uh, has been fun working on and I'm glad to share it with you. So everybody, please stay safe, stay well and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.